Assalamu alaikum everyone. So today lecture number 30 and we will be discussing read only memory that is ROM right. In uh, the previous lecture we have discussed RAM that is random access memory right and today we will be discussing about read only memory right. So these are the uh, points right. So uh, normally we call uh, ROM as read only memory right but there are certain methods by using those methods special methods we can write into that memory right ROM we can update the ROM you might have experienced uh, whenever you want to update your uh, BIOS ROM right so uh, there are certain special methods and by using those methods you can update your ROM right right but normally it is considered that uh, it is a read only memory right so you have to use spe special methods in order to write into the ROM so I if we talk about the organization its infrastructure or its inside story so its internal uh, architecture or organization is similar to SRAM right synchronous random access memory right so as uh, we have already experienced that uh, whenever we have a truth table so by using that truth table we can implement a circuitry so in fact ROMs are the implementation of those truth tables right so if uh, you know and uh, you must know about the truth tables right so they are actually the effective uh, implementation of truth tables right so we can uh, implement any logical function by using ROMs right so uh, as uh, we have already uh, seen a trica where we have uh, the truth table right the circuitry and the boolean function so we can uh, by having one of those uh, different representations we can implement them right so it's a implementation of a logical function right you this uh, is very uh, normal that uh, those ROMs they are being used in today's computer systems right even uh, if you talk about uh, laptops uh, personal computer servers right so ROMs are basic and essential component of those different devices right so uh, uh, lastly right they are very useful for the implementation of finite state machines right we can implement the finite state machine by using ROMs right so uh, let's uh, start ROM right so it's it's uh, actually an array of semiconductor devices right and you know that in semiconductor we talk about diodes transistors FETs JFETs and so and so forth right so uh, we have an array of semiconductor devices right interconnected together and we can have the implementation or we can realize the ROM by having or by interconnecting or by joining different transistors diodes and FETs together right so and if you talk about the size right so uh, if I have n input lines right so how many words I can address uh, if we talk about a RAM so 2 raised to power n so same is the story over here so we can have 2 raised to power n words or we can address 2 raised to power n unique words when we talk about the addressing right so if you have n address lines in uh, then we can have 2 raised to power n unique words uh, right and uh, the number of bits they are also important right so each word the length of each word right one byte two byte or maybe four bit three bit and so and so forth right so this is uh, the same point right data can be read but not change right 
So uh, during, uh, if we have normal operating conditions, so it's difficult to write onto the ROM, right? But uh, as I have mentioned, there are certain in special method methods, or methodologies, or mechanisms, and by using those methods, you can write or update your ROM, right? But you have to be very, very careful because if uh, you are trying to update your ROM and uh, by chance uh, the power is gone or some uh, other uh, power failure happen, right? So you will lose right all your data and you have to do something else, right? So then it's difficult to use uh, even those special methods to update the RAM. So you have to be very, very careful. So uh, actually, uh, as I have mentioned, that uh, ROM is an implementation of the truth table, right? So uh, till uh, the combinational circuitry, we only discuss truth tables, uh, logical functions, and different circuitry. And uh, within that circuitry, we have used only basic building blocks of the Boolean logic, and these are and or not, right? All the circuitry is based on uh, the basic building block logic that is and or not, right? So in other words, combinational logic, right? So uh, in other words, you can say that the ROMs are ac actually combinational devices, right? Not sequential drive devices, right? So here we have uh, the address, and this is the data, right? So you can call it or name it uh, a truth table, right? So this is a table that shows uh, what data is stored at each ROM address, right? So at 000, we have 000, right? And at this address, we have this data, and you can see the, right? So here we have. 0, 0, 0 at this address, right? And then we have 0, 1, 0, 0 at the next location in at next location, right? So these are the addresses and this is the actual data, right? So there is no uh, sequential circuitry that is required in order to generate those addresses, right? Or data, right? So you can see that we can have this is a sort of simple truth table. And if I talk about uh, this is the input and this is the output, right? So you can have the relationship. I can uh, calculate the min terms for V2. Similarly, I can calculate the min terms for V1 and for V0, right? So we, uh, what I will be doing, I will be looking for the ones at the corresponding positions, right? So here, here, so let me write down so that we can have an idea. This is M0, M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M6, and M7, right? So what we have, we have uh, those main terms, right? So whenever I will be taking into account V2, right? So you can see we will be having M1, M2, M3, M4, right? And all other are zeros. So here M2, M6, and M7. And here for V0, we have M4, M6, and M7, right? So you can find out the relationship, right? And you can have an idea that those are actually the implementation of truth tables, right? So this is the uh, block diagram, right? So it's a sort of a similar uh, diagram, yeah. right? If you think about the RAM, so these are the input lines, right? Or uh, address lines, three address lines, right? So how many distinct or unique locations we can address, right? So two raised to the power three, eight, right? And here we have the input, right data in and here we have the five output lines right so we will be having five input lines right and five output lines if uh, we talk about the 
upgradation, right? So normally this is not mentioned because we take it as read-only memory, ROM, right? So that's why we uh, normally uh, do not mention the input lines, right? So because we consider that it's only uh, it's read-only memory, right? So here n input bits to raise power n words by m bits, right? So we can address eight distinct words, five bit each, right? The length of each word is five bit, right? So here we have uh, more detailed structure, right? This is the decoder, right? And the functionality of this decoder is to generate address, right? So you, we can address the corresponding location within the ROM in order to read data at that location, right? So if we have n input lines, so we can have to raise power n words. And if the length of each word is m bit, so size of this ROM should be to raise power n words into m bits, right? Right. Okay. Right. So here we have the implementation. It's implementation. So this is the truth table, right? We have m bits, right? So this is uh, for addresses, right? So two raised power m entries in the ROM, right? So you can see we have uh, different, all different possible combinations, right? If we have three bits, right? So zero zero zero. 0, 0, 001, 0, 010. 0. So this is a normal counting, and we have studied counters. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, right? So starting from 0 to 7, so a total of 8. So we can address 8 different locations, right? And this is the data, actual data. If I call it D0, D1, D2 and D3. So these are the data lines, right? And so as we have four bits, right? So the length of each word, right? Length of each word is four bit, right? So if I have to calculate the size, right? So two raised to the power three into 4 right so this is the size of this ROM right so here again uh, we are calculating the size right so if we have 2 raised to power 10 these are different address lines right 10 address lines so we can have 2 raised to the power 10 different addresses, right? And uh, 20 outputs, right? So 2 raised to the power 10, right? Into 20, right? So this is the length of the, this represents the length of the single word, right? Length of single word right 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 so here we have uh, the implementation and you can see that again here we have three input lines right and this is one two three four five right so uh, we have eight different words right two raised to the power three uh, you can write 2 raised to the power 3 or 8, it's the same into 5 because each word is of length 5, right? And, and this is the same stuff, intel, internal structure of the ROM, right? And here uh, you can see that we have the implementation, right? So I will be writing down the same in terms here right so m0 m1 m2 m3 m4 m5 m6 and m7 
if I talk about F0, so you can see we have M1, M3, M6, and M7. M1, M3, M6, and M7, right? So you can see at F0, right? So this is what? This is M7, right? So I, I will be writing down the plus M6 plus M3 right and plus M1 so if I go back right so you can see we have 1 2 3 4 1 3 6 and 7 right so 1 3 6 and 7 right so these are the switches right so you can see that they are connected for this F0 right similarly for F1 right so here we have M0 M1 right M3 M4 M5 and M7 right so you can see that we have M0 M1 M3 M4 M5 right and this is M7 right so this is M0 1 right 3 and 4 and 5 and this is 7 right similarly we have for F0 M1 right M3 M5 and this is M6 right so this is the way out how we construct the ROM memory arrays right so this is the inside story right so you can uh, see an alternative uh, view right so we have uh, you can see we have uh, horizontal lines and vertical lines right so these are the rows and these are the columns right so at the bottom we have OR gates right so, and those OR gates or the output of those OR gates they represent the output right of the word that has been selected right so here we have 32 distinct and unique locations right regarding this uh, our out different uh, output if you, we talk about this decoder right so how many addresses we can have uh, by using this decoder 32 starting from 0 till 31 so how many bits uh, we need right 1 2 3 4 5 right so 2 raised to power 5 right so that is 32 right so 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 right 4 8 16 and 32 right so we need we have 32 distinct and unique addresses right so how we can use this right okay right so here uh, we have an example right what we need to do over here we have to specify the truth table for a ROM which implements this functionality right so you can see that we have three different variables a b and c right and three different outputs right so uh, if we take those variables a b c as input and f g h as output right so let me solve this right so for f what we have we have a uh, b and c is missing over here so c plus c bar and this is the same a bar b and c bar right so i will be having a b c plus a b c bar right and a b c and c bar this is for f right so here you can see that for f we have right if i go back a b c right so i will be having a one here right a b c so a b c bar right a b c bar i will be having a one here right and then a bar b c right a bar b right a bar b and c bar a bar b and c bar right so we have three terms and rest of are zeros right right for g it's a sort of uh, complicated right so if i talk about g right so here we have the three terms a bar b bar and c plus and here we are missing a plus a bar 
and we are also missing B right so what I need to do a bar B bar C right so I will be having C bar right so a B plus a B bar right plus a bar B plus a bar B bar right and I will be having a bar B bar C right plus a B C bar plus a B bar C bar right plus a bar B C bar right and plus a bar B bar C bar right so this is one right and then uh, we have a bar B bar C right this uh, S we have this right so this is gone this is also gone right and then we have a b c bar right a b c bar right so this is also gone right a b bar right a b bar and c bar so here we have one this is also gone right a bar b right where is a bar b and c bar right so here we have one right so this is also gone two three four five one two three four five right so rest of the values they are zero right so we have the same right three ones right and then zero one zero one and zero one right right so for H you can see that we have all the three variables in all three terms right so we can have one here right that represent a bar b bar a bar b bar and c and that is a b bar c bar a b bar c bar right and this is the a b c bar right so this is uh, you can say uh, the same stuff uh, whenever we talk about uh, the combinational logic so if you are given uh, the boolean functions right so we can have the truth table right so this is uh, the same example right so we are given the boolean functions right and we have to construct the truth table and after having a truth table we can simply design the ROM infrastructure right so here you can see that this is the implementation step right so if I talk about F right you see for F we have so I have to write down the main terms here because it is easy to remember M1 M2 and this is M3 this is M4 M5 M6 and M7 right so you can see for F we have M2 right M6 and M7 right so M2 right and M6 and M7 and this is the OR gate right so this is the functional implementation of this truth table right from the boolean functions we have drawn the truth table and now from the truth table we are going for the physical implementation right so this is uh, the same stuff decoder right we have to use a decoder that can generate eight different addresses in order to accommodate those different locations so these are the addresses right right so you can see that these are being handled by or represented by this decoder right and now for the F we have already gone through right for G you can see we have 0 1 3 right so this is 0 1 3 and then we have 4 and 6 right so after that we have this is 4 and this is 6 right so you can see that this is the row and this is the column right and here we have 
right m1 m4 and m6 right this is m1 m4 and m6 right so we have the functional implementation 3 into 8 ROM right right so you can see that each column is representing a new function right so if we talk about this so we have a distinct uh, boolean function for this right because we have m2 m6 and m7 right so i can write down for this f right so for this f this is m2 plus m6 plus m7 right so this is a unique function right for g i can write right m0 plus m1 right plus m2 plus m4 right and plus m6 right similarly for uh, h what i can have i can have m1 this is m4 right and this is what this is m6 so each column is representing a unique function right or I can have another representation if uh, you remember right so I can have 1 right 4 and 6 right this is for H for F I can have summation 2 6 7 right for G I can have 0 1 2 4 and 6 right okay so this is another representation right now let's talk about the decoding functions when we talk about or think about ROMs right so as we know that we can convert truth tables to circuits right, right? so that we have uh, already learned in when we were discussing combinational logic right so there are different ways to do that right and and we can use decoders right so if you remember we have a very good example of a carry and a sum by implementing a decoder right so here we have a decoder right so we have three input lines right so one line has to be selected at a time right so here you can see that we have s0 s1 and s3 right and here we have the outputs starting from 0 till 7 right so this is uh, the same uh, truth table for carry and a sum right so we have to add those bits right this is the carry and this is the sum you can see 0 carry 1 sum 0 carry 1 sum carry 1 sum 0 right so this is the same truth table so here we have 1 carry and 1 sum right so if I talk about this right so you can see that we can represent this uh, again I have to write down the main terms right because they are very very important and we it's easy for us to remember right m6 m7 right so for this carry I have m3 right and uh, m5 right so let me write down here for this carry we have 1 uh, for this carry we have m3 right so this is 3 not 1 right and then we have 5 6 7 5 6 and 7 right so we 1 2 3 4 right and they should be odd right so you can see that 3 where is 3 so this is 3 so I will be writing here 3 and then 5 this is 5 and then 6 this is 6 and this is 7 right and for this sum right so let me write down 1 2 right and this is 4 right and this is 7 right so 4 
and I will be writing down here right so this is one and this is what this is two and this is what four and this is what seven right so zero is unused right so this is an example of the application of decoder right so if we talk about rams right so you can right so uh, it mean uh, we can take this circuit circuit as a memory right so uh, what uh, capability it is having right so it can store the sum and the carry output right from the truth table so you can see that we can have we can store the carry and the sum right so whenever we have uh, those different combinations we can store the carry and the sum right so here we have the ROM setup right so you can see that uh, actually ROMs are the implementation of decoder functions right so here you can see that uh, a blank ROM it's just providing a decoder and several OR gates right so a blank ROM right so here we have OR gate again OR gate right so and the connections uh, between decoder and the OR gates are programmable right so we will discuss after some slides that how right okay so here you can see that here are three functions right and uh, we have v2 v1 and v0 and they has to be implemented by an 8 into 3 rom right so here we have mentioned the connections with uh, the cross with uh, blue right so this is that there is a connection between this uh, cross right indicating the connection between the horizontal and the vertical line right so here we have a connection right so you can see this is the q4 and this is the vertical line right so here if i want to represent this with min terms right so we will be having one two right and this is three this is four right uh, similarly you can see we have two right so this is two this is six and this is seven right so connections has to be mentioned right for v naught we have four right and then six here and then seven here right so this is the implementation right so here we have the same example right but this is an alternate representation right of the same 8 into 3 RAM right so if I go back so you can see we have 3 output right and over here uh, and 8 different addresses that can be generated right so again 8 into 3 3 output and 8 different addresses that this decoder can generate right so this combinational circuit can be considered a read-only memory right so here we have eight words right and the length of each word is three bit right so here we have the combinations and these combination represent the, right the address right it's starting from a0 to a2 a2 a1 a0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 so these are the combinations and here we have the data actual data that is stored inside the ROM right so this is the data at this location and this data is stored at this location right so if I talk about this v2 right so you can see we have uh, so uh, I will not be writing the mean terms now right so 1 right 2 3 and 4 right for v1 we have 2 6 7 right so this is 2 and this is 6 and 7 for v0 we have 4 6 and 7 right and uh, now let's talk about the difference between ram and 
ROM, right? So ROMs are non-volatile, right? So uh, you can think about the little clock that is sitting inside your computer or inside PC, right? Or laptop, right? So whenever you turn off your computer and you switch it on, so we'll see that time is working and it is correct and even date and some other parameters they are being stored permanently there, right? So it means uh, the contents of the ROM are non-volatile, right? So data is preserved even uh, when you switched off and switch on, you will have the same settings and same data, right? On the other hand, uh, if you have a file, right, and you are working uh, in an application, for example, Microsoft Office or some other application, and you are writing down some of the contents, and that application is normally lo loaded, right, inside your uh, RAM, right? So, uh, unfortunately, if you have uh, power switched off, right, so, uh, and you have not saved the file, right? And you have not uh, cache, right? I mean, some applications, they are intelligent enough, yeah, they produce or they uh, store uh, the contents uh, of the file, right? Or the contents uh, automatically and whenever uh, the power is switched off and uh, you you reboot or restart your computer, right? So the contents are available, right? So I am talking about in the scenario with when you don't have the cache facility, right? Uh, so uh, your contents will be gone, right? So it means that the contents that are being in the RAM, right? So they will be disappeared, right? whenever the power is lost, right? So some applications, they store the contents on the hard disk, right? Like Microsoft Office, right? But we are talking about the scenario when uh, we have not the hard disk, right? And we have booted the system from a bootable, right? CD, right? And in that case, right, so you, you don't have any storage uh, device, right, right, and so your contents will be lost, right, because they are being loaded inside the RAM, right. So uh, in order to write or update the ROMs, you need special techniques, that's what I mentioned, right. So normally they are considered as read-only memories, right. So we can have different RAMs and ROMs from different companies, right? So after having uh, the comparison between RAMs and ROMs, let's talk about uh, ROM implementation, right, of a Mori machine, right? So here you can see that uh, we have uh, a machine. It looks like a state machine, right? So as you can see that the output uh, is a function of current state only, right? So there is no direct path from input to the output, right? Right. So uh, this is a sort of Mori machine where the output is dependent on the current state, right? So as we already discussed, that ROMs can only implement combinational logic, right? Right. But here we can use those ROMs, right? So this is the, uh, you can say the memory element, right? And this is the combinational logic, right? And again, here we have the combinational logic, right? So this is the sort of uh, element or block within that machine that is capable of storing the state, right? So this is the combinational part, right? And this is again the combinational part. And this combinational part is providing input to this sequential part, right? So here, from this uh, sequential part, the output is uh, obtained via this combinational part, and you can see that the output is a function of the current state only, right? So this is this representing the current state, right? So we have uh, the 
more a machine implementation by using RAM, ROMs, right? So uh, you can also calculate uh, the frequency and so and so forth, right? So, but uh, the objective over here is to show the implementation of ROM, right? Within the Mori machine, and uh, despite using the combinational logic, we have used ROM here, right? So here. Uh, we have the ROM implementation of a Mele machine, right? So as opposed to the previous uh, implementation, so here you can see that we have uh, there is a direct path from input to the output, right? So you can see, so again, uh, this is the combinational part, a combinational part, and this is the sequential part, right? So uh, input to the memory element right so output from the memory element or state element is provided to this combinational part and we are receiving output so you can see we can say that output is a function of the current state and the input right if we focus on this part right so output is a function of current state and this input right and this is the feedback loop right so so as uh, you, you know that uh, they cannot hold states, right? So we have replaced the combinational circuit circuitry by ROMs, right? So this is another implementation uh, of Mele machine, right? So that's all for today's lecture, right? So today we have discussed ROMs, uh, that is read-only memories, right? So uh, the ROMs are actually they are constructed from uh, diodes, transistors, right? And these uh, uh, FETs, right? right? So those are the semiconductor devices, right? And we can also have uh, ROMs of different sizes, right? So if we talk about uh, the internal circuitry, right? So the main uh, building blocks of the ROMs are uh, decoder right and the storage element right and those uh, decoding and storage elements they are uh, being constructed uh, or manufactured uh, or implemented by using the simple combinational logic right so there is no sequential logic involved uh, if we talk about the ROMs right so uh, then uh, we talked about uh, different implementations right so we can have a uh, simple boolean function and uh, we can implement uh, the rom by using uh, that boolean function right as uh, we all know that uh, if we have a boolean function we can construct the truth table and as uh, uh, i mentioned that uh, roms are actually implementation of truth tables so if you can construct a truth table from a boolean function so in effect effectively you can say that we can construct uh, or implement uh, a ROM by having a boolean function right S then uh, we talked about uh, the size, uh, how we compute the size of the ROM, right? So uh, it depends on the uh, number of words within uh, the circuitry, right? So if uh, I have three address lines, right? Uh, so I can have eight different or I can address eight different locations, right? And the length of the word at each location is 4 bit, right? So I will be having uh, a ROM of size 2 raised to power 8 into 4, right? So this is the size of uh, the ROM, right? And after that, uh, we talked about the arrays, right? So how we normally uh, implement, right? Or you can say alternate implementation, right, of ROM arrays, right? So we can say that if we have uh, rows and columns, right? So what we need to do, we need to uh, connect the corresponding switches that 
intersect those different rows and columns and we will have the alternate or array implementation of the ROM memory right and then uh, after that we uh, can also have uh, the decoder right uh, implementation right as a sum and carry right as we talked about uh, mm, the ROM implementation with the help of a decoder and the uh, corresponding storage circuitry right so we can have the sum and carry implementation by the uh, by the implementation of our ROM right and then we talked about uh, the comparison between RAM and ROM right so we have different uh, features and different uh, similarities right so as uh, ROM is a non volatile sort of memory uh, while on the other hand RAM is a non volatile memory right so it means all of your contents will be uh, lost whenever we have the power failure but uh, on the other side if uh, we talk about the ROM uh, the contents are not lost and if uh, the power is lost right so you can have the same settings right so you can have a very simple example of the clock right or the settings which are being stored inside your ROM so uh, then we talk about the ROM implementation right so one of the implementation is the sum and carry and then we can also have the ROM implementation within the melee and more machine right so as we know that uh, uh, within a uh, more machine the output is a function of the present state only right so we can replace the combinational part within that machine with the help of the ROM right because uh, we all know that ROM is the implementation of the combinational circuitry right so uh, it includes the combinational circuitry there is no memory element there is no sequential logic no sequential circuitry that is involved within the ROM right so what we can do we can replace that combinational part within a finite state machine right or you can say more a finite state machine where we have output as a function of the current state or the present state right so you can uh, replace those combinational parts by ROMs and we can have the ROM implementation within the Moray machine, right? And then uh, we talked about the Malay machine, right? And again here uh, we can replace those combinational paths that uh, that are providing input to the state element or the sequential element or the flip flops, and that is also providing output before, all right? Uh, so before getting the output we have a combinational part right so you can have uh, replacement of those combinational parts by ROM right so in melee machine uh, we all know that output is a function of the input and the present state right so we can replace uh, the combinational parts by ROMs and we can have the ROM implementation within those melee machines right so uh, that's all for today's lecture and uh, meri taraf se allah assalamu alaikum